Hello and welcome back to Talking Europe. Well, Ukraine is keeping up the pressure on the EU and the G7 as it prepares military action aimed at pushing back Russian forces in the country. In mid-May, President Volodymyr Zelensky carried out a whirlwind tour of France, Germany and Italy. And on May the 20th, Zelensky pulled out the diplomatic stops at the Group of Seven summit. In Japan, he welcomed what he called a historic U.S. decision to support an international fighter jet coalition for Ukraine. Moscow, meanwhile, is warning the West that it faces huge risks in any escalation. One thing seems clear, this war is far from over, but how to end it? That is something that my panelists today don't exactly agree on. I'm pleased to welcome Asita Kanko, a Belgian MEP from the European Conservatives and Reformists, and Katerina Roth Nevedialova, a Slovak MEP from the Socialists and Democrats. Welcome to both of you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Maybe we could start with, uh, with you, uh, Katerina Roth. Uh, so we haven't actually uh, seen you on this program before, and you have a position in the European Parliament which is quite rare in that you uh, don't support uh, weapons uh, supplies to Ukraine. Yeah, thank you very much for having me in this show for the first time. I'm, I'm very pleased and glad to be here. Uh, yes, my position is maybe a rare and it's maybe minority position, but uh, it's not that I'm completely against the, the, the weapons to be su supplied to Ukraine in general. I'm against the European common position on doing this, and I respect that some member states could have this position uh, to do that, but it's their own, own decision. And I disagree with uh, the common European position to do it together as European Union. And I'm also opposing uh, the, the possibility of financing uh, of this uh, ammunition and weapons for the Ukrainian uh, So you, you're, you're in favor of individual countries making deals with Ukraine if they want to? I don't want to interfere in individual countries doing this. Yes. I'm also, uh, if there is a NATO position, it's, it's fine for me, but I don't, don't believe that the European Union itself is a military operation or military organization, so the European Union do, didn't or, or shouldn't have a uh, disposition to do that because it's against our treaties and against because our policies. You want to stay neutral on what is exactly. happening? Exactly. I think that the position of the European Union is to be the uh, maybe the honest broker or maybe the one to be the medi mediator between those two parts of the conflict. That's the position of the Union. That's why U European Union was established 70 years ago, and that's what we should keep on. Sitokanko, is neutrality is is that a credible position as far as you're concerned? I think today, when we are in a situation like that, when Ukraine is in a situation of legitimate defense, so neutrality is not very far from complicity in my opinion, because we have the moral duty and the strategic responsibility to have our say and to have impact in the way in which global order is structured. And right now, Putin is not going to stop in Ukraine. He's kind of trying to control the, the Black Sea. He's trying to control much more than one piece of territory. He wants to use it. Use it as a logistics and military base against the wall that we stand for. And this so was, for now, this was your not. impression from your visit to Moldova, I'm guessing? It was also the impression. Actually, I, I, I was having this position already. Um, I think the European Union woke up too late. We need to be much more cap capable of anticipation and using our diplomatic power, but knowing that people like Putin only understand when we show power to in, in our diplomacy as well, not only wars. When I went to Moldova with the, the Security and Defense Subcommittee um, last week, you know, I felt the, the commitment of the people for the EU, and we need to embrace it because we tend inside the EU itself to take peace for granted. We need to embrace that will to support what we stand for. It's protection economically and on all other ways. At the same time, we need to be careful to not have any shortcut. Becoming a member of the EU is a very long road, and the road itself is paved with a lot of goals that you can achieve to improve the life of people in your country. We'll come back but to we could feel the, 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 the war not being far, and the impact on the people, especially when we went to the border of Transnistria. 
Uh, we'll come back to the question of EU membership, but just on to, to develop a bit your point about uh, Vladimir Putin, because mm -hmm. I'd like to put that to uh, Katerina, Katerina Roth as well. Uh, what, what do you make of that, that uh, there shouldn't be any compromise with him? Uh, you've actually argued that, uh, the, that Europe shouldn't wait for a change in political leadership in the Kremlin, that now is the time to try and reach out to him. Yes, of course, but uh, we shouldn't be just uh, having these big speeches like we always do, and we still have also from the position of Joseph Borrell, we are still just uh, arguing and just still like screaming on Putin and about Putin. And many countries in the European Union also take this uh, opportunity, uh, very badly said, but it is like that, uh, to kind of solve their historical issues with Russia. The problem for me is that there are people dying in the field and there is still a war, which is on my country borders, because I'm from Slovakia, Slovakia is bordering with Ukraine. We have many refugees coming from Ukraine and this is a big issue for also for the citizens of my own country. So I, 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 I say that we have to be the one to request the peace discussion. I'm very glad that Denmark uh, did this uh, request for the peace uh, talks finally, after one and a half year, we should have done this much earlier. We should have uh, pushed as the European Union to do that. It's our mission, it's our goal, and it's our constitution of the European Union because it's a peace institution and it was established in the 50s, last, in the last century, because of ending of the wars in Europe. So it's, 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 it's our DNA. And I don't understand why we are still talking about the well, ammunition, I... about the guns, and we are not, not talking about the peace process. But in this, peace uh, process under what conditions, uh, based on what <laughs> concessions, is the million-dollar uh, question, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, if I was Bambi, why would I want to negotiate an armed to negotiate peace with a lion? Because I would see peace, but the lion only see a male. This is what is happening now with Ukraine. Ukraine has nothing. We need to give them weapons. I totally support the idea of giving the jets. People say, yeah, there are risks attached. The bigger risk is right here on our doorstep. If we don't, then it will be negotiating with a lion and they'll just be eaten up and then we'll be the next ones on the line, especially countries like Slovakia, like Moldavia, countries who are close there in the, on, on the border. So, I, so no I, negotiations at all? Or, no, we or, need to do both. Right. You know, if you want, if I am Bambi and I want to negotiate with the lion, I will make sure I have a lot of weapons because that will have kind of a balanced power. We need to speak, to use diplomacy, but also use power. And there can only be peace when the aggression stops. Otherwise, there is no peace but submission. This is the difference. But we need to think of a way out. And the way out is will not exist uh, in favor of justice if that way out means that Ukraine should lay down and be run over by Russia. I think this is a very point. idealistic uh, approach towards this. Pragmatic. The problem is, it's, I am a very pragmatic person, I'm very rational. This, what is happening in Ukraine is happening since 2014. This is not something which just started last year. And we were just quiet and same. we were discussing, we were, we were talking about it. Suddenly when then this aggression started, we start to send the weapons. But the thing is that the weapons are still staying there. And once there will be a day when this conflict will, will finish, for me, the, the, the issue is that we should cease the fires, we should cease the war, we should stop, uh, stop how do you uh, killing cease, the people. How do you cease the war? So Zelensky it's not and Ukraine need to say we are, we are the seizing war and, more and what weapons. is this is not the way how to end the war. It's requesting the peace, it's requesting them to sit behind one table if you are and not just supporting one side of the conflict, but really requesting them to sit down. We have the issues how I to totally do that. Disagree. We are the international community. It's, it's, uh, it's our role, it's our mission to do that. And we have to do that as the European Union, not just to stand and still still saying, like, we are all military experts now in the European Union. We are all the members of the European Parliament. No, I, I don't understand I, what, I, what I, all, I, are all the types I, of the weapons we are sending there because I don't, I don't want to I do am that. An, I am in the Committee For of me, Security it's the and people. Defense. It's the people and who are dying in the field. That's the issue. May I react to that? Yes. I totally disagree. You know, you can have peace, you can speak about peace. Everyone wants peace. But if you want peace, sometimes you need to prepare for the war. Ukraine is under attack. Russia is attacking Ukraine, is killing innocent people. Women and kids are being raped. How can you say, OK, this all is there, but let's sit down as members of parliament, especially when we are in the right committee, we need to be aware of what's going on. That's why we are elected. So when I see this, I believe that we need to choose the side of 
Ukraine that is on, on European territory. J just and a Ukraine... quick point. Well, we, we understand your very different uh, positions on that particular question, but just quickly on uh, EU membership for Ukraine. Uh, I, I suppose this is something that you might both I would actually, actually react agree to the, to this, uh, come I together disagree. a bit more. I wanted to come to the membership. If I may react to that first. J just quickly, yes. Yes. Because we uh, need to give... That's what, because she's, you say, what are we going to do with the weapons later? That's why it's also useful that Ukraine is having a European perspective. They need to tackle corruption. They need to tackle bureaucracy. They need to tackle all kinds of issues in the country, and this will be progress. In that perspective, we need to keep them close to work together because you need allies, and we need to tackle Russian influence not only in Ukraine, but also in Africa, for example. I think for Ukraine, just like for Moldova, no shortcut. They need to follow the, the steps of the Aki Communautaire to become member. So they, it's, there cannot be any exception. They need to follow the same steps are all, as all other countries that are carrying what do, do you think Ukraine's place ultimately is in the European Union? I think their, their place is close to the European Union. But also, I think, uh, and I agree with one thing with you, uh, and that's if they fill all the conditions, they can be accepted as a member. But it's not so a long time ago when we were talking about Ukraine as a corrupted government, as a corrupted country. Suddenly, the war is there, and we forgot all of, uh, and you mentioned that, uh, we forgot about all of this, and we are just sending the military uh, ammunition and the weapons there, and we are just pretending that everything is okay. And we even promised them a, a very fast track to the European Union membership, which I disagree on. And the thing I, is, I disagree that this on is still the the country, this is still the country in the war, which yeah. is against uh, the conditions of becoming the member. The second, they are not filling all the conditions, and we are just promising them something which is not happening in maybe 20 years or even more. And coming from Eastern Europe, I know how hard it was for us to become the member of the, of the Union because of the post-Soviet uh, They need to follow things. the same, the they same need to steps follow as the same everyone. Steps, but we are now <laughs> a liberalization of the trade with, Europe, with, with Ukraine. I am opposing this because this is not okay. But we need to tackle corruption in Ukraine and also inside the European Parliament. Yes, we have to. I agree with you. Especially and I'm not a corrupt politician, I can say, and I can say this uh, very much in public. The thing is that we are sending them uh, there the weapons. We don't know what is really happening with the weapons. I believe But the weapons that they are, are used to defend yes, Ukraine we, we believe, against Russia. But there will be the okay. end of the war. This and it obvious. will be quite NATO difficult is there, the EU the is there. We, I mean. We've covered the military side, but <laughs> yeah. I can see that on EU membership as well, you don't actually see eye to eye. So I think this is probably the right time to end the discussion. But I'd like to thank <laughs> Katarina Rod Nevedialova and Asita Konko. And that's all for this episode of Talking Europe. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You.